Today, we are driving the longest road we have ever done with our trailer. And guess what? There's no gas stations along the way. Wish us luck. All right, we just opened the door and- It's clearly not sealed in oh, here. Wow. It's all over the floor. All of these drawers, it's completely covered in like, dust. Like literally every cupboard. We have some casualties too with our stove. This is kind of broken now. Great. <laughs> We're Dana and Mike. We've been living life on the road with our three dogs searching for adventure. We are currently on the road headed up north with our end goal to see the Arctic Ocean. Join us every Sunday for new videos as we show you amazing campsites and the stunning natural beauty of North America. Don't forget to like and subscribe. How's it going everyone? Hello! Welcome to another episode of Let's Just Go Travel. We are currently here in the Northwest Territories. Been spending the last like week or so here. We saw a bunch of really, really cool waterfalls and explored the area around Yellowknife and we had a really, really great time. Today we have hitched up and we are heading out of Northwest Territories. We're heading back into BC. We're gonna slowly start making our way over to Alaska as well as stop at some of our favorite sites along the Northern BC route. But before we do that, we do need to get out of Northwest Territories and this is going to be a bit of a challenge. So as we're on the road out of Northwest Territories, we have to go through this really, really long section. It's between Fort Providence and Fort Liard. It's about a 480 kilometer stretch of highway where there is no gas stations. It's gonna be tough with us in a gas truck pulling a trailer. Our max distance that we can go while we're towing can be anywhere from 350 kilometers to 450 kilometers. So in either of those scenarios, we're not gonna make this 480 kilometer stretch. But we have purchased a couple of gas cans and we're probably gonna have to use those. But even so, if we get faced with things like a bunch of hills or if it's really, really windy, then both of those things really kill our gas mileage. So we're really hoping for some luck today that we can make this giant stretch of road without any problems. We're currently in Yellowknife. We're gonna gas up here and get some last minute supplies before we go. But yeah, join us for that as we make our way back into BC and wish us luck that we make it through this stretch. <laughs> All right, while we are stopping here at co-op for gas, more water, we are going to change the air filter. So if you guys saw our last episode, we drove through a bunch of wildfire smoke. It's actually, I don't know, it's not that bad, but we should still change it anyway. It's been a long time since we changed this. So yeah, no, better to get a new filter in now that we're past most of the wildfires and yeah, it should be all good. You know you're in the north when you've massacred this many bugs while driving. The trailer's even worse, look at the trailer. Just bug fest. <laughs> Gross. Okay, so our goal for today, this is a multi-day drive, we're not gonna get it all done in one day, but on our first day here, we're gonna try to do 718 kilometers. It's gonna take a little bit over eight and a half hours. Today, we should get deep into the whole the 480 kilometers of no gas station so we'll probably end up somewhere in between that today by the end of it all and hopefully still have enough gas <laughs> all right we're about two and a half hours in now time for a lunch break a good tip for living on the road the day before you know you're gonna have a long drive day make something that has lots of leftovers like pasta because then you have food for on the road. You don't need to stop and make something. You don't need to spend money on the road like for like fast food. No, it's a good tip for sure. We've gotten used to doing it pretty, pretty often now before drive days. It works great. <laughs> Calvin, do you wish you had some pasta? I wish. <laughs> One other thing about really long days is obviously your body gets super sore, super tight. I've noticed the last little while that my body is just not having it on these long days. So we brought with us our neck massager. So I have decided that today I'm gonna sit here, get a massage while we drive. Also the massage gun comes in handy so that you can massage out your legs while you're sitting here. Oh, seems brilliant to me. 
This thing is going so fast, it, you can barely see it in the video. Like, it looks like it's in slow motion. Alrighty, so we're approaching Fort Providence, and this is the site of the last gas station before we drive almost a 500 kilometer stretch of no gas. Okay, here we go. Goodbye to the last gas station, and I hope we make it. <laughs> <laughs> So we just hit this gravel road. There's some construction happening. I think this gravel road goes on for like 12 kilometers. So it's, it's quite a while. <laughs> okay, so we just saw the end of construction zone sign and it didn't go back to pavement. So... <laughs> I really hope it does. <laughs> we really hope it does. We did not know that this highway was going to be basically all gravel. Yeah, we're like a good 40 kilometers in now and it's just been gravel, so <laughs> it's uh... <laughs> a surprise! <laughs> it's, it's... On the plus side, uh, it's making us have to go real slow. Yeah, So our gas is great. Our gas is fine. All right, so we've done 125 kilometers of the 480 that we're meaning to do. Actually, our gas mileage, yeah, like we said, is actually quite good. That's some of the best numbers we've ever gotten. The distance till empty, I don't know, that's not accurate. I've never seen those sort of numbers for towing, so I doubt we would ever make anything close to that, and it's usually wrong. But yeah, we're definitely not making very good time. It's already four o'clock in the afternoon, and we left at 9.30 this morning on what was supposed to be like an eight and a half, nine hour drive. Cause we have to go so slow now on this gravel road. We're just not making it there the time that we were meeting to. So who knows how long we're actually gonna get to go tonight, but I don't know, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was just telling Dana that I starting to understand now why there's no like services and stuff on this road because there's literally nothing out here. We haven't hit any small towns and no homes or anything like that. We think we saw like an abandoned building. But other than that, there's just nothing out here. You might as well just be driving down like a forest service road for all you know. <laughs> so we got our list of all the wildlife that we've seen so far heading up north. And as you can see, bison is the clear winner. <laughs> But I mean, it was cool. We got to see a couple of grizzlies, which was, I'd never seen a grizzly before, so that was a first for me. And same with porcupine. We had never seen one of those in real life either. So yeah, it was pretty cool. <laughs> Whoa, we just hit pavement. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> That's crazy. Wow. I had a feeling, I was like, it must start at some point, yeah. but yeah, who knows? This is great. All right, we are about to get to the halfway point between where we started and Fort Liard. So we are turning left to continue to Fort Liard. If we went that way to Fort Simpson, it's basically an hour drive to Fort Simpson to a gas station, and then we'd have to come an hour back just to go down here again. So it's no lie, there is no gas station between Fort Providence where we started and Fort Liard where we're going. Oh yeah, and plus it's gravel yet again. All right, it's almost 6 p.m. We've been driving for about eight and a half hours now. The puppies are telling us to stop yeah, because they, they need they, food. Yeah, they really need to have some dinner. And I could use a snack too. <laughs> and yeah, we're still well above half a tank of gas. Yeah, going through that stretch of gravel road where we had to go slow, that saved a ton of gas. And yeah, we were all worried about not being able to make it through this stretch with enough gas. But at this rate, we're not even gonna have to touch the jerry cans. It should just make it all the way to Fort Liard. Small wins there, saving gas by going slow, you save some money at the same time. So, you know, we get there a little bit slower, but whatever, we still make it, so it's all good. Bear, you must get out of the way. Yes, please. All right, we have arrived at what is hopefully gonna be our rest stop for the night and another thing we we literally just saw a bear less than a kilometer away we're actually kind of headed back in the direction <laughs> of the bear now 
So we gotta really be bear aware, make sure there's no sort of food left out or anything. But uh, yeah, this will work. Oh yeah, it's nice and open. Why don't we do a loop? Uh, I'm thinking over there. But I'm glad this that this worked. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we've been driving for 11 hours now. Oh, it's been a long day. I, I just want to not be driving anymore. All right. Home for All the right. night. Finally, I am so done driving. <laughs> So this is where we're at. We are just above a quarter tank left. Uh, and we only have about another 70 kilometers or so to go before we get to Fort Liard. So success on making it with one tank of gas. Definitely those gravel roads were sort of a blessing in disguise because we had to go so much slower, but that also made it so this day was long because that was really long. <laughs> yeah, there's like no pull-offs. Like this specific road that we're on right now, there was one like, like, stop. like road like, stop it. with like a trash can and like yeah. a parking area but yeah. that's it like we are in the middle of nowhere we yeah. haven't seen another another house or building or little community in so long now yeah it's just this part of northwest territories is really really remote we're actually near an area called the nahani river and it's really interesting because we've heard a lot of like crazy stories about that area there's been like a lot of weird unsolved murders that happen deep in the <laughs> nahani valley you, i think if you listen to uh, what was oh the yeah podcast? there's this podcast that i listen to called mr ball and that he talks about unsolved mysteries and things like that and deep in the nahani valley you have to fly to get there yeah. there's been some crazy unsolved murders and it's like we're sort of near that area <laughs> right now so that makes you feel good doesn't it <laughs> and just the fact that we just saw a bear like less than a kilometer away like we are within deep wildlife territory there's no humans out there there's no society or anything so you got to be really careful but in any case we are done for the day we're gonna go rest in the trailer and relax all right we just opened the door and it's clearly not sealed in oh, here wow. all look this. at this it's so thick jeez Cool. Oh yeah, and it's pretty much it's all over the. It's all over the floor. Yeah. Oh great. <laughs> Look at the map. Oh man, this is gross. Literally everything in here is covered with a fine layer of dust. Well, that's how you know the trailer is definitely not completely dust proof. Oh jeez, this is no good. This is disgusting. Like, look at that. Yeah. We got some casualties too with our stove. This is kind of broken now. Kind of. It's completely <laughs> broken. Great. <laughs> Filthy in here. So we have this bag of dog food that lives in the back here. I'm going to move it to inside of the car because the tunnel cover is not going to be enough to prevent the smell of it to get to that bear that's somewhere over there. So yeah, better be safe than sorry. All right, it's the next morning. And Still cleaning up dust? Yeah, like we didn't notice until later last night that everything in all of these drawers is also just completely covered in like dust. Like literally every cover, even in... Yeah, Here, even 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 all these, covered. all of those are you can't really see on camera, but all of that's covered in dust. It was just a crazy dust storm in here. So, so before we leave, we're trying to figure out ways to kind of minimize the dust that's going to get in here because we still have a fair amount of that dirt road to go down. So, I'd rather avoid it being gross in here again if we can. We found that a lot of it came in from the front door here, like the bottom corners. So we're actually gonna try to like shove like a yoga mat down there <laughs> for when we drive to see if it'll help plug up that hole. So these are pretty unorthodox ways of doing this. <laughs> <Is it up? laughs> <See? laughs> Alrighty, we are out of here. On our way now, we're gonna head to Fort Liard to get gas. And then after that, we're gonna be heading back into BC and we're gonna hit up an area which is one of our favorites by far. It's called Stone Mountain Provincial Park. We're gonna find like a free campsite near that area and do some exploring. It'll be good to get back into it after all this crazy driving. So yeah, let's go find a cool campsite. Maybe a little less creepy than this one, huh? <laughs> Oh, 
All right, we have finally made it to a gas station. It's an interesting setup. You got a prepay here and pump here and all the gas is stored in this giant tank right here. So that's kind of interesting. Uh, but yeah, we are just under a quarter of a tank. So we averaged about basically 19.9, 20 liters per 100 kilometers. It says we have 134 kilometers left. I don't really trust that. That gauge is usually wrong, but I mean, we made it all the way here. 485 kilometers on one tank of gas. Didn't have to use any jerry cans. Worked out good, except for the dust. That was awful. All right, gassed up. Let's get back to BC and head off to the next campsite. Okay. Oh my God, we are about to transition back to pavement. <laughs> calls the Racing River Bridge Camp Spot. This camp spot is super, super gorgeous. However, little side note, if you are coming in a trailer our size, 20 feet, you have to back in. Yeah, so that's the entryway and I took it head first thinking that I could kind of go around this whole thing um, and we did, but it was like sketch. barely. So, <laughs> so sketch. It was not a good idea. No, <laughs> do not do it. Yeah, so yeah. Back so in. back in from the road if you're gonna come to this spot. <laughs> yeah, guys, check it out. Awesome spot. Welcome back to BC. Welcome to the Rocky Mountains. Yeah. We've been to this area three times now. This is our third time. Both times we have camped at the provincial park. Yeah. So this is the first time yeah. that we've camped for free around the same area. We're gonna um, a few more free spots too. Maybe we'll show you those as well. Yeah. And like now that we're here, I'm wondering why we didn't do the free spot in the other two trips because this is so nice. I think we were <laughs> super new. Yeah. And... It's nice to be back in BC. We got the trailer all set up and then man, did we have to do the biggest, craziest clean ever. We opened every drawer. We emptied out every drawer, yeah. wiped down everything, had to like basically wash all of our pots and pans. Everything was just dusty. That was really bad what we just went through. Yeah. <laughs> we just spent literally the whole afternoon cleaning all of that. We are so exhausted and we're just done with today. Not only did we drive, over two days we drove like 16 hours. But having to deal with all that dust and basically re-cleaning the entire inside of the trailer, all that together, we are over it. <laughs> and we are just gonna relax here for a couple of days and just enjoy this amazing view of these amazing mountains around us. And it's just, it's nice to be back near mountains again, back in BC, our home province. We love it here. But anyways, guys, we are gonna say good night for now, even though it looks like it's in the middle of the day, but it's actually getting later in the day already. We'll catch you guys soon once we get out there and start doing stuff. But for now, we just kind of need a break, a reset. We'll catch you guys soon. See ya. <laughs> All right, hello everyone. Welcome to a new day. So we've just been kind of hanging out in the trailer, relaxing after that craziness we went through. Today, we're finally gonna get out there and go do some hikes. We are going to do the Baba Canyon Trail today. So yeah, guys, join us for that. It's a beautiful day here today near Stone Mountain Provincial Park. And let's do this. Baba Canyon parking lot. It is across the street from the trailhead and already the views are stunning. So this is gonna be a good hike. So this trail is approximately six kilometers into the canyon. Uh, there's two options. You could do 
the six kilometer one that we're doing, or there's also an 11 kilometer one that goes deeper in and you get a different viewpoint. Yeah, we're hoping to just do the six and hopefully there's a waterfall at the end of it. But we're on our way now. Like we said before, this is our third time in this provincial park at Stone Mountain. We have done a ton of the different hikes here. We've done the, the main ones that you're supposed to do when you're out here, such as Flower Springs Trail and the Summit Trail. Those were both really, really awesome. And yeah, it's nice to be able to check off some of these other hikes here because there's just so many really, really nice ones. So if you can, you gotta hit them all, but it takes time. It takes multiple trips as you can see, but I don't know, totally worth it. This place is just amazing. These river crossings are a little bit of a challenge for the puppies. And then keeping them on a leash because, you know, bear safety and all is a little bit more complicated. But the water's gorgeous. This yeah. canyon's beautiful. Yeah. I mean, it's not a bad thing to be in this water. It is. It's hot today. Yeah. Well, everyone, we made it to the little miniature waterfall. <laughs> Honestly, this looks really cool. Yeah, so this isn't the end of the trail. I'd be happy if it was, <laughs> but um, this is just really pretty. There's like a big pool, a waterfall, the mountains. It's a very nice spot to hang out. So we're just scouting a couple spots because you know we love our free camping and didn't know very many in this area so we found one that might work for our trailer it's down the road very very end and yeah, it's got a bit of some nice mountain views but uh, no water view which is okay mountains are just as glorious all right here's another one this one's pretty close to where we are, but it looks pretty overgrown. <laughs> it's quite a bit smaller than ours. Oh, dear God. Uh, okay, this is... I mean, it's pretty. Car only. Yeah, but you're not getting a trailer. Well, I mean, sure. No, I guess you're not. you could back it in, but like... You're getting it's scraped It's very up. small. <laughs> All right, we are back to our beautiful camp spot. And the reason we were scouting the other one was because I've been putting together a big giant map that I'm hoping to sell one day and a bunch of itineraries. Oh my goodness, these hair. <laughs> um, and a bunch of itineraries that I'm hoping to sell to you guys. And I've been putting in a lot of work. So I've been trying to find some additional camping around here that is free because like we said earlier, Summit Lake can get pretty expensive if you're staying here for quite a long time. From what we just saw, I believe only one of them really could work but it's not beautiful but it could work these trips that we've been on like all the different journeys that we've been on throughout the last few years were all designed and basically curated by dana like she has done so much crazy research into all the different locations campsites hikes and where to go and what to check out and where you can find all these things it takes a lot of effort to create these maps and itineraries for us so if you guys have been following along you know that we have a few that are out there for free that you guys can check out. There's one for like Ireland and, and Newfoundland and one for Northern BC, which is where we are now. But Dana has so many other ones in the works, like an entire cross Canada one, one for Mexico, one for the States. There's just so many different places to explore. And yeah, like she said, we're hoping to sell them at some point. For now, a few of them are for free. You can check them out in the link in the description below. And it gets really detailed, like exactly where to go to get campsites, exactly where to go to do these hikes, how long they are, what you're gonna need, all this stuff so definitely check them out and go out there and make your own awesome adventures and memories i totally forgot that i was supposed to fix this stove before we left this spot so if you guys remember from earlier this element has completely kind of broken okay take this off all right so as you can see this metal bit is 
supposed to attach here, <laughs> but that's uh, no good anymore. So I think my plan is to get a good old L bracket corner brace and then just kind of somehow make it fit underneath this and hold everything back up, something like that. Breaking on this side too, you can see. So I might as well do both. <laughs> So this is the piece and normally this connects like this <laughs> and as you can see this side's pretty much broken too. So we'll just take the corner brace, put it in here on both sides, probably cut it down to size because it's a little too big and it should be easy. Let's do it. Well, ta-da! The ugliest stove element brace ever made. <laughs> Let's see if this works. All right, well, I guess that's done. Yeah, some of these fixes that I've had to do in this trailer have been <laughs> yeah, <they're> pretty bad. <laughs> it's just you gotta use what you have and do what you can, right? So at least it's secured now for hopefully the rest of this trip and we'll replace it for real later. <laughs>So it's the next day. We're actually on our last day here now in Northern BC. And we're in an area called Mooncho Lake Provincial Park. It's about 30, 40 minutes away from where we're camped. We're gonna do a hike called Stone's Sheep Trail. It's to go into this valley here. And there should be some really cool views. About six and a half kilometers. Should take about three hours or so. It's a beautiful day, not too hot. Time for a hike. Let's do this. All right, we're really into the canyon now. Yeah. And we're both just saying that it's really got this Lord of the Rings evil vibe going yeah. on deep in the canyon there because of all the clouds and makes it super moody. Yeah. But and I think this trail, I don't know what, they, what they're called, but these little like hoodoo type things that keep popping up, they're uh, very kind of creepy. They give off that creepy vibe. <laughs> So yeah, at the end of the trail, there's a cool little alcove thing and a couple of small waterfalls. Landscapes here are really rugged, just surrounded by all these jagged rocks. The beautiful Rocky Mountains, baby, is awesome. everybody hello and welcome to the next day we have hitched up and we're moving on to our next adventure it was really nice to have this sort of familiar place to hang out at for this week before we set off into the unknown so we are heading off now into the Yukon so join us next week as we explore that new amazing province I mean territory it's a territory not a province so yeah guys thank you so much for hanging out with us stick around for more adventures to come and wish us luck as we head deeper into the north into the unknown Let's do this, huh? But with that, guys, thank you so much for watching. My name is Mike. I'm Dana. We're Let's Just Go Travel, and we'll see you guys on the next one. Woo